We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust and to be trusted. We all despise control and desire freedom. We, we are, are all united. united. Good morning from Buenos Aires, Argentina, and good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and welcome to this session. My name is Olga Cavalli. I am the co-founder and director of the South School of Internet Governance. And I will share in this session, this, this is not a workshop, it's an it's a award event, uh, but it's not an award really, it's a presentation of the new structure of the South School of Internet Governance. And uh, I would like to thank the government of Poland for organizing this IGF. Unfortunately, we are not able to be there in, in Poland. This is my first IGF with not, not being present. Last year was virtual but uh, we hope to meet again face-to-face uh, -face somewhere in the world. This activity is organized by the South School of Internet Governance, by the Center of Training and High Technology for Latin America and the Caribbean, CCATELAT, by ECOMLAC, the Latin America and Caribbean Federation of Internet Electronic Commerce and New Internet Technologies, and the Internet Society Argentina chapter. And let me first thank all of you, especially to my friends and colleagues who are joining with us uh, in this session this morning. My dear friend Claudio Lucena from Brazil, he's a professor of the law faculty at the University of Paraíba. Seja bem-vindo, Claudio. Jorge Navarro, his partner at Navarro Abogados and Consultores in Mexico, and he's also a consultant from UNCTAD. And my dear friend Vanessa Fusco, she's Chief Prosecutor of the Intelligence and Security of Minas Gerais State in Brazil. And my dear friend Nicolas Ferreira, he's Senior Researcher and Lecturer at Hamburg University of Technology. Thank you very much for being with us this uh, morning for us and uh, afternoon for those of you in Europe. We have 45 minutes. And the idea of this session is to tell you some uh, part, some background about the story of the South School of Internet Governance, but at the same time, present a new structure that it has in relation with the, how many hours uh, are the, uh, are the um, oh, this is very early for me, <laughs> for English, uh, the, the fellows are having and uh, all, uh, some, some new uh, features that we have included, uh, technology um, included in the in, in, in all the process. So first, let me share with you a short PowerPoint. I promise it should not be uh, very long. And, um, but um, I want to show you some pictures. No, this is, the order is very bad. Oh, there. So 13 years, we started with the school in 2009 as um, we had this idea of increasing the number of representatives of the region in the internet ecosystem. Why we had this idea of the school? Because we were participating in internet governance meetings in ICANN, in IGF, and in other fora. And the representation from Latin America was, was very, few people from the region, but not only few people, they were not very involved and the participation was not very relevant. So we thought that it could be good to have a space where to have um, information um, to build a network and to have uh, information about the main concepts. Mainly, it's not a very into the, the each issue, but the general concepts and um, information about what's going on in the ecosystem. So this is how we started, and with these three missions and objectives, as I said, the number of representatives of the region in the internet ecosystem to be increased from the region to train the future leaders uh, of uh, internet governance in the region and grant fellowships to all participants. So we have never ever charged for any of the activities that we do, nor the fellowships, nor the book, and not, not the attendance to the, to the conference and to the other activities that we organize. And this is something that we are, uh, we are committed to maintain because uh, we are totally convinced that for Latin America, this is important. 
sometimes pain is a big barrier for participants in, in our region. I see the room, it's empty, but we are here, don't worry. And this is taped and then it recorded. So uh, this is some pictures of the first meeting in Buenos Aires in, the, in, in, an, in, in an engineering school, ITVA, where I was teacher at that time. Uh, we were, uh, oh, oh, we were um, 27 fellows. Then we went to Brazil, in Sao Paulo, 2010, Mexico, 2011. As you see, the group is growing every year. Uh, 2012 in Bogota, I think this was somehow it changed the story of the school because we moved from like 70, 80 students to 200 and then we kept 200 uh, on and on the following years. Uh, to, oh, something happens with the power, PowerPoint. 2013 in Panama, uh, Trinidad Tobago 14, 15 Costa Rica. Then we went again to um, Brazil, and then two times in the Organization of American States in 2016 and 2018 in the Organization of American States venue, and um, something happens with the PowerPoint, sorry. And then uh, we went to, uh, we moved to a virtual event. We tried to do a different virtual event, moving away from the normal uh, Zoom or two dimensions. We tried it to, to make it a little bit more interactive so we uh, we hired a special tv studio to do the the broadcasting and we had the participants remotely and we also tried to include some visual um uh, interaction and some visual features as you can see uh, in some of the pictures here uh, we had i think we had face to face more than 5000 fellowships uh, granted I have no idea how many people have attended uh, virtually. We have here a list of uh, all the countries that we think uh, have participated. What happened with the two last um, um, virtual events is that we, we broadened the, the, the boundaries of the school because we had fellows from Asia, Africa, and North America, and Europe as well. As Usually it's focused in Latin America, but uh, as it's virtual now, it was always virtual also. We always had um, remote participation, but it seems to be that people is more acquainted to participate virtually in different events. So we had people from all over the world as fellows. So um, we always had full gender balance among the fellows. Uh, as much diversity as possible in relation with geography and where the fellows come from. We, we grant fellowships to all the candidates and uh, we include, we pay the, the hotel, the training, the meals, and sometimes we pay for the ticket. This is dependent on the budget and dependent on the needs of some uh, fellows. Uh, and uh, always from day zero, all the activities are translated into English and Spanish by uh, real translators. And when we organized it two times in Brazil, we had translation in three languages, Portuguese, Spanish, and English. So one of the new features is we have an application for the fellows. We developed an app so the fellows can follow all the, all the event from wherever they want with their mobile phone. So they can watch the videos, they can uh, interact in between each other through a, a messaging tool that it's included in the application. They can see each other there. They can also interact with, uh, with the expert, of course, if they're willing to, to get into the, into the application. And uh, they can see the agenda, everything course is in both languages as you can see here Spanish and English and here are some you can see some um, some captures of the screen of the um, of the application and this will be available from now on for all the schools and also it will be available for the Argentina School of Internet Governance that we also organize every year since 2017. Um, new feature this is a uh, brand new uh, why we thought this was important. So every year we do a survey of satisfaction that is filled by the fellows. And they always said that we, we, got, we got into the event 
but they needed more information before. So we usually share with them before uh, reading materials and PowerPoints and some videos, but uh, it seemed to be the case that that was not enough. So we decided to create a new, uh, a new training course. It, it is uh, asynchronous, it is self-assisted and, and um, um, with self-evaluations. Uh, uh, we have used a tool which is called Kahoot. We have prepared special videos for this training course and we have prepared special podcasts. So you can follow all this training from any, any type of device, some mobile phones, computers, and uh, this was done during eight weeks. It's not that they were sitting there eight weeks completely, of course, this was too much, but uh, the idea was that at least two or three hours per week during eight weeks, they were able to watch the videos, to uh, read the material and to hear the podcast. So this content was specially prepared for the fellows. This year we had 620 fellows, as I said, from all over the world. And all this pre-training course, and as the application, of course, is developed in the two languages, English and Spanish. So these are the new features. Uh, all the fellows found it very, very interesting. So in, in, in between the two activities, we have like 70 hours of training that goes uh, through eight weeks plus the uh, intensive five days uh, of training, which is simultaneous that you may already have heard about or may have participated. So the target audience is, is always the same. This is a nice picture in the venue of the Organization of American States of the meeting we organized in 2016. That's Christopher Painter. He's a good friend of the school. He always comes to make uh, very interesting lectures and that's uh, myself in, 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 the, in there. Uh, so the target audience is those who are interested in internet governance, but not yet so much involved and included in the ecosystem. Um, so as I said, we, we really take care of diversity. This year, we had 3,500 3, uh, candidates. Uh, that was the year that we had the most. Uh, this year was organized with the Ministry of ICTs of Colombia, and they have a very, very big network to communicate with the community. So we had a very important Colombian uh, community in the school this year, of course, with fellows from all over the world, from more than 42 countries. Um, so um, let's go to that. Also, we edited a book uh, as the for the 10th anniversary of the school. You can download it from our website, uh, gobernanzainternet.org in Spanish, English, and Portuguese. It's free, it's very heavy. So we decided not to print. It's like 700 pages. So it's, it's good for the environment and uh, it's very heavy to carry out and it's very expensive. So it's free for the community. You can download it whenever you want from our website. So the, also in 2015, we started with the Argentina School of Internet Governance. Uh, you can see the three face-to-face -face editions here. And uh, in the last two years, we moved to virtual and the same with the school. And we have some pictures from, this is the last face-to-face -face meeting in Mexico. And this is Mexico, that's Nico there. And that's uh, in, in the Organization of American States in 2019. And uh, that's it. So I won't bother you with these pictures, but uh, I thought it would be interesting to review the, um, the story of the school. And now I'd like to, to go to my dear fellows and friends who are with us uh, this morning. Oh, Vanessa, I didn't see you at the beginning. How are you? Bienvenida, querida. está en mute. So I would, I would, I would like to, um, to ask some some insights from, from my dear fellows and friends here. And I will start with Vanessa. Um, Vanessa, you made a great, great contribution to the book. Uh, you, you wrote an article in the, uh, a chapter in the book, which is um, of course very interesting. And uh, in your role of prosecutors of the Minas Gerais um, um, fiscal minister in Brazil, how do you uh, evaluate or think about the existence of training spaces like the South School of Internet Governance in relation to understanding the interactions between the different organizations of the internet ecosystem and uh, welcome, Vanessa. Uh, 
Oh, okay, uh, you were muted, but now you're... Okay, okay. Hi, hello, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to be here. And, uh, well, uh, talking about the law to computer science uh, we will always be an attempt. And I decided to, bri to bridge the disciplinary gaps between two scientific practices, each one with the methodological demands and constraints. Uh, I have found in the South uh, School of Internet Governance the perfect place to establish an important middle ground, aiming to present a reasonable, current picture of this, this challenge. In the past 11 years uh, that I have been collaborating as an instructor of the um, uh, school, I have seen, on one hand, uh, the technologies improvements, but on the other hand, uh, the gaps uh, in the legal framework. Uh, I have been participating, talking about the challenges uh, of the justice system uh, to investigate cyber crimes. But also, uh, I have learned related a, a lot. Uh, I have learned a lot related to the ecosystem uh, of internet. Uh, it's a new word for a lawyer. Um, in fact, Understanding the internet ecosystem, it's not an easy task for legal professionals, as I am. Uh, this school has contributed with the interaction of the, this eco ecosystem, uh, the multiplicity of interests among the groups involved, uh, with a vision of consensus, coordination and cooperation keeping alive the principle of neutrality. The unprecedented coronavirus pandemic is profoundly affecting the global cyber threat uh, landscape. Compounding a global health crisis with sharp increases in cyber criminal activities related to COVID-19 is putting significant strain of law enforcement communities uh, worldwide. Uh, according to the Interpol private sector partners, uh, a lot of spam messages, uh, 737 uh, incidents related to malware, and 40,000 malicious um, websites all related to COVID-19 were detected between January uh, and April 24, 2020. To maximize damage and financial gains, cyber criminals are shifting their targets from individuals and in small business to major corporate corporations, governments, and critical infra infrastructure. For instance, I see the School of Internet Governance with the mission uh, of contributing to the discussion of the main issues of the digital world, being the interaction with the law at each day, more and more pre present. Uh, nowadays, we have another concern uh, as the use, uh, as a, an example, as the use of the artificial intelligence for public safety uh, purpose and the relation with uh, human rights ethics uh, and, and possible violations. In my perspective, uh, Olga, the school should be a stage to bring experts to contribute with the discussion related to the disuse of artificial intelligence of hum and human, right, human rights violations, among other issues uh, in the digital world. Raising awareness and providing proper information also about laws, obligations, not just about computer scientists themselves, but also about those who will suffer or enjoy the results are their constructions. Uh, for me, as a prosecutor, it's an honor to be able to enjoy this space that this school had provided me as a government representative, uh, collaborating also with the publications that you mentioned. I'm sure that the school is already consolidated 
worldwide as an example of excellence in its environment, uh, recognized by professionals because of the democratic process of application, distribution, fe distributing fellowships between participants. More than uh, anything else, I would like to thank you for the opportunity to be part of this winner project and my best wishes in the new format. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vanessa. Do you know how I met Vanessa? I met Vanessa in one workshop we used to organize about the usage of Spanish and Portuguese in internet. You remember that? And she contacted yes. me through in, in the IGF environment because she was interested in promoting what she was doing in Brazil with content about what, of, of her areas of expertise. So thanks to the IGF we met and she has been contributing with the school. Thank you very much. And just for you to know, I sit in the school and I learn because as, as you rightly mentioned, the internet ecosystem is very difficult to understand and to, to capture. Thank you, Vanessa, for your nice comments. Okay. Nicolas, hi, Nicolas. Hello, we get Nicolas. Nicolas, he's, he's a very good friend of us of the school. He lives in Germany, but now he's visiting our nice country. He, he's from Argentina. He's in Argentina. So good to have you around in this latitude, Nicolas. And congratulations for your new appointment in the, in the University of Hamburg. Uh, Nico, from your academic perspective, you're a researcher and you're an academic. What do you think about the impact of the School of Internet Governance in the academic field in relation with the internet governance and internet in general? And, and welcome to, the, to this activity. So uh, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the uh, South School of Internet Governance. I think it's a terrific initiative, especially within Latin America. And uh, it's a very open uh, project to everyone who wants to share or learn uh, uh, from other uh, experts or share its or her own expertise with the uh, with the scholars so i really think it's uh you're doing a terrific job guys so thumbs up for you and congratulations on the on this panel um so maybe for uh, the attending uh, the attendees or what i can have what i can identify especially having worked for more than eight years in uh, with other disciplines. I'm a computer scientist, but uh, my work is tightly related to uh, work in psychology and, uh, and also law. Um, so I think that today's major problems regarding internet governance cannot be addressed solely from a single discipline. And I think that the South School provides a forum in which experts from different backgrounds and uh, expertise join forces to discuss problems such as privacy, security, AI, trust, that require a high degree of interdisciplinary work. Uh, so I think that this, in this way, uh, thereby participants become knowledgeable on how complex these problems really are. And, uh, and this is crucial because the start, the, this is, um, at this point, they start to get uh, ready for future work that will demand uh, a lot of interaction and cooperation with experts from other disciplines. So I really think that uh, bringing together all of this variety of viewpoints uh, on such a complex uh, issues is very enriching and uh, whoever participate there will in the end realize oh okay i have to stretch myself i have to go out of my comfort zone and start you know browsing other disciplines and other types of work so i can enrich my own uh, uh, my, my my own research for example in my case as a researcher has been very, very enriching the experience um, because normally I think uh, I would say that we academics are uh, somehow inside a box and uh, we forget that our, our research has an impact on civil society, has an impact on in governance and uh, shaping a little bit uh, or maybe a lot our uh, research focus to embrace that, uh, that impact. I think it helps a lot in the outcome. It adds a lot of value and a lot of quality for a researcher's work. And, um, and uh, on the other hand, uh, I also uh, had the chance, for example, to test my hypothesis, my research hypothesis, to test my, my findings within the, uh, the audience of the South School. I was able to see how people were reacting to it, if they liked it, if they did not like it, if they had something to criticize, if they had something to uh, contribute and every time I have I came back to my office after the uh, South School I said 
oh, okay, this is something that people really appreciate. This is something that they really uh, think it, it, it could be a, a, applicable uh, in terms of governance, in terms of um, a civil society and, and so on. So this is the right direction. In some cases I said, oh, okay, people did not get that. And, and this is really critical because I really want to transfer this knowledge. I really want to make my point in this, in this way. So for me, it was really good for, uh, for improving uh, what, I was, what I was doing at, the, at that point. And, um, and as I said, uh, I think it's a, it's a real, uh, it's a great forum in which uh, that fosters the cooperation between academia industry and civil society uh, to a large extent um, and for example um, we uh, we normally when we go to the university and we study a specific uh, uh, area of knowledge we forget that at the very end we might end up interacting with people from other uh, from other back with another, with another background and uh, it happened to me when I was working on the um, on a project about the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation in Europe, and our goal was to bring the bring all the provisions of the GDPR to a more uh, engineering um, level. So, what do we do with all this bunch of legal provisions? How do we manage to get them to the engineers so they can actually do privacy by design? And at that point, I realized that okay, I am lacking of knowledge. How can I parse that into something? That I mean, for me, I was a complete alien to, uh, to to law or to legal knowledge, and I really had to work together with people who were experts on law, experts on privacy law, in order to transfer that knowledge into engineering tools. So, I would uh, this is my example, this is my my experience, and I would definitely encourage, uh, I would strongly encourage academics to join this event, either as so either as a speaker because it's very it's a very enriching experience so i congratulate you for the whole uh, so many years of effort and uh, this new format is very promising so i am really looking forward to participate again thank you nico nico you were remind me you were fellow in washington in 2016 i was yeah i was the the first time we met in this in is Western where we washington. met there yeah Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I, I exactly. remember the time you came and talked to me and, and yeah. Uh, th something that's very interesting that you mentioned is the network. We, we didn't organize this event for the networking, but I think it's a fantastic outcome. And a spin off from what we do, it's how people get related in between, also experts in, in, among them and, and fellows. Uh, and, and let me uh, now give the floor to my dear friend Claudio. Uh, I met Claudio in Geneva one day. We were in a coffee in a coffee break in a mug meeting, and I invited him to the school. And he came. He's 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 also an expert and very well recognized expert. But he came as a fellow in Costa Rica. So I would like to really uh, recognize and thank you for for that because I think it's uh, it was humble from you coming as as a, as a fellow. And how was your experience being a fellow? And how did you um, uh, get into the internet ecosystem after the school? And, and welcome, Claudio. Good morning. Nice to have you here. Good morning. Good early morning for us here, Olga. And <laughs> good morning for all the other fellows. I Thank you coffee. again for the, <laughs> for the invitation, Adrian, uh, Vanessa, and uh, Alfredo, and all the Jorge, and all the other fellows. Uh, me, Olga, and Nico here have been having practically day, daily meetings <laughs> across this week. Thank you again for being uh, here, uh, uh, Olga. If my my story with in in the engagement with internet governance, if if when we look when I look at the pictures that you just showed here, uh, it, it tells an, an incredibly intense story that happened over the period of of six years in my life, with, with which is a very Your short life, period yeah. in my life, but it's very intense, uh, and Costa uh, uh, South School on Internet Governance, Costa Rica, 2015, is chapter one introduction. Before that, my work in the area had been uh, in the university, in one single theme, with people who spoke the same language. Nothing could be more wrong when you're trying to develop impact uh, work in internet governance. And that changed altogether. Uh, when I was with you in, in, in Costa Rica, because we saw we are uh, faced with diversity 
actual diversity because the selection process for the fellows touches upon that. And then we start seeing in practice decisions and policies that we only uh, in the university, we usually know of or, or hear of or write about study, even collect data about it, but we don't see it in, in practice. And then we do have uh, in the South School on Internet Governance. Then the, the, the aspect of interdisciplinarity, I remember very much the first question that a fellow journalist from Costa Rica asked on my very first day uh, was uh, this internet governance. And, and she, in Spanish, she said, Se come con que? Eh? what do you serve it with? <laughs> and it was difficult. It was hard for me to, to explain to my family what I was, why I was leaving home so much because I couldn't condensate. I couldn't uh, construe the, 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 that very complex knowledge uh, in one uh, sentence in a two minute elevator pitch for them and the the environment also helped me do so uh, and there's the, then there's the, the the issue and I always highlight that other the issue of uh, of multilingualism multilingualism is a recurrent theme when we discuss internet governance throughout the world but I don't know of another school on internet governance that practices it that makes the effort. That makes the effort to 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 serve a regional community like uh, you you have been doing uh, uh, along these years. That helped me a lot. Connect back to the. I was living in Europe back then, in uh, between Lisbon and Brussels when we met. And this the, the South School and Internet Governance also served as a connection for me to the region when I when I would eventually <laughs> came back. In 2018, I would not have the network that Nico is referring to. I would not have the network, the feeling, the fellows in the region uh, to work with uh, as I do now. If it hadn't been for the for the South School on Internet Governance, it actually, and then the, the, about the impact, it actually trans radically transformed the way I work daily in my undergrad, in my post with my postgrad students. It's a completely different view that I'm able to offer to them. It's surprising that for, a, for such a complex theme for which we need as never before, interdisciplinarity, multilingualism, this global comprehension of the world, we do not have more initiatives like those. Of course, it's a huge effort. I understand the, the lack of more initiatives. It's a huge effort. Only when we are uh, working with you in the organization for two or three sessions and imagine what you do for the other 30 or 40 sessions. We know the dimension of the effort it takes, but uh, I'm one of the uh, one, one of the witnesses that it, it, it really pays off. I think you also made a, a, a great job in tapping into the needs of what we have after 2018 to, to, to build a, a very in, interactive new. It's one of the best interactive formats I have participated along this two years in which I'm sitting on this chair here and not going anywhere else. The format is, is really uh, interesting, participative, dynamic, interactive. I'm looking very much forward this new format and to keep contributing to one of the, one of the initiatives that is most, most dear uh, to me in the ecosystem. Thank you very much you. and good luck for the, for the next Thank you, Claudio. Uh, Thank you very much. I, I, I do appreciate your work. I see that the construction by your side <laughs> is still going on. It's still here. It has, I'm been, it again. has been recurring, recurring noise in all the meetings that we had this week <laughs> with Claudio, which is, which is okay. And uh, you bring interesting uh, thought about universities. I, I am also a university teacher and university still, uh, that's okay what they do, but they're still focusing only one one issue and it's difficult to move away from there. So I think the school with this multidisciplinary perspective helps that. And uh, the effort of doing a different format and the effort of the multilingualism is extremely difficult. It's very challenging for budget. Very ex Everyone told me from day zero that I was totally crazy. I am, for those that you know me, you know that I am a crazy person and Adrian also, but we, we had this idea of, it has to be at least in two languages. And we were so lucky in the two times we organized it in Brazil, that Brazilians uh, were contributing with that uh, translation into Portuguese, the FGV in, in, in Rio and uh, the, uh, the ZGI in, in Sao Paulo. They, they did contribute with the translation in Portuguese, which we do appreciate. It, we could do it in more languages, but it's, uh, for the moment we have this <laughs> Spanish and English. Uh, thank you very much, Claudio, for your comments.
And now I'd like to go to my dear friend, um, Jorge Navarro. Jorge, you, you are in a party. What's, what's behind you? It said that that's some lights and it's uh, La Ola de Espejos. Eh? <laughs> yeah, well, well uh, it's Christmas. What is it? Uh, it's Christmas. Well, yes. it, it is uh, five o'clock, uh, uh, almost five o'clock in, in the morning. So, uh, and I have not taken yet my, my coffee. So, so then, well, it's, it's a party. Let's celebrate about this, but really uh, a great, a great pleasure, Olga, to be uh, here. Jorge, uh, you, you, you participated in, in the first school that we yeah. organized in, in Buenos Aires. That was totally an experiment. And many people thought that we were totally out of our minds and we were going not to make any success and that was going to be boring and nobody was interested, but it was, it was totally the contrary. But you were there, so you are a witness of the of the first steps of the school uh, in Buenos Aires. I remember the night that we were singing. You remember that? You know uh, what I mean? <laughs> absolutely. That was fun. That was absolutely. very fun. And uh, and uh, how how can you evaluate? And, and you have participated in many other uh, editions of the school, and um, especially in very much involved when, when in your nice country Mexico, which I I miss a lot. Also miss Brazil a lot. You know. You know, I love Brazil and Mexico, you, you all know that. And uh, how can you evaluate this evolution over, over the years? And, and welcome and thanks for joining us with us. Uh, well, uh, first of all, Olga, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for, for your invitation. And oh, it's a course. Christmas tree. I see it now, it's a Christmas tree. I thought it was a light in the, <laughs> in the ceiling. <laughs> well, I, I, I agree that also uh, Nico told that he felt like an alien about these uh, legal issues or these technological issues. Oh, it's uh, the, the Christmas tree. But, uh, well, I think that it, is, it has been a, a great experience uh, being there at the first, uh, at the first beginning. I, I do agree that uh, I also thought that uh, Adrian and you were out of your mind. Uh, absolutely. And, um, uh, and of course, uh, I agree with that. And then uh, I felt uh, like uh, Roman says, similibus, similibus, you know, I definitely I connected with you because maybe all of us are, have this, uh, we share this enthusiasm that it's really hard to, to, to get uh, in any project. I, I remember the first, uh, the first edition uh, that all these troubles to have one sponsor, it was a challenge to have one sponsor or to have one host. It, it was really, a, I was involved in, in Mexico uh, in the organization of the Mexican events in 2000. Uh, I think it was 2000, 2000, uh, 2011. The first 11, and 19, and the, 19, the and, 19. and uh, from drafting the the contracts with the uh, with the hosts, it was a, a challenge because uh, when you start a project, many people do not uh, believe that you are going to succeed, and many hurdles, many obstacles you face uh, for uh, having uh, these uh, these editions. Thirteen years we have been together. Thirteen years. But I knew, knew you from 2007, from Montevideo, when we were having uh, this e-commerce e workshop in Montevideo with uh, Gonzalo and Cecil Barrer from UNCTAD. And the once uh, I remember that you and, and Adrian told me, Jorge, uh, the next edition in 2008, we are going to be sitting in Palacio de San Martin. Uh, which is the, the main venue uh, where the presidents uh, receive uh, all the, the, the kings, the royalty, the prime ministers of the world. And I say, yes, 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 of course, Adrian. You didn't oh, believe yeah. it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and I believe in Santa Claus. And, and you know, uh, the point is that uh, the day, the, the year after that, we were sit, we were set uh, uh, in this, uh, Palacio San Martin, and I remember in a coffee break that that, uh, that Adrian took me to the main hall where uh, where the president was receiving. The president the was there, of, yeah. 
Cristina uh, was well, here. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> and she, she was, was receiving... with another president. She was the yeah. president of Croatia. From and Sweden. Sweden. And then Sweden, uh, yeah. uh, Adrian opened, opened, uh, opened the door. And Cristina says like, hi, Adri. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 he's joking. He's uh, joking. Uh, uh, okay, so so then when when, when but the president was me, there, the president was there. The president was meeting Adrian, and uh, and then I say I I thought well these guys have uh, make things happen. And then when you told me, when Adrian gave me a call and told me, Jorge, we were talking with, uh, by Skype and he told me, Jorge, we have a, a, a small academic event and we would love you uh, to, to have you there. And then I say, well, okay, why not? Yes, yes, let, let me arrange the agenda and, and we'll be pleased to be there. And when I arrived to the first venue, it was a, a, a a small, a small room, a very small not room. Not the palacio, not the palacio. No, 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 no <laughs> it was not the palace. Uh, it was a small room. And uh, it was, uh, I remember that, that we were having some, some, some problems uh, at that stage with, with the budget and um, all, all this stuff. And then uh, we arrived in a very uh, modest, uh, at, the, at the modest hotel, at a modest college. But this so was one, one, one classroom of a university. That's all the one we had. Yeah, uh, and, and, and it was great because, uh, you know, having uh, in that small room, having the presence uh, of Vint Cerf, uh, of Ariel Doria, of William Drake, uh, I said, hey, it will take it uh, the adequate place in the time. And we were right. Having, uh, I remember we have um, more or less 27 students in, in that venue, 25, 27. 27. Yeah. From, all, from all the region, six from Argentina, but four of them were from the provinces, not from Buenos Aires. So uh, we very, have, very, very diverse. And also have the, their participation in, social, uh, in the social networks. It was, uh, at that stage, it was uh, very innovative. Oh, and after that, yes. uh, now having more than 620 scores. 620 this year, yeah. And, but we had, you know, 3,500 that wanted to. It, it was too much. It, has, it is um, craziness. It is craziness. We have, we have two minutes. Uh, we have two minutes. Thank you, Jorge, for bringing this, these nice memories. I, I didn't remember that thing about the Palacio. But for those of you uh, listening, Palacio San Martin is, the, is the, the venue of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but not the offices. It's in front of Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Maybe, Nico, you have been there? Um, in the Palacio, no? Fortunately it, it, not. It, it, was, <laughs> a, it was a house. A house was a very, very wealthy family in, in, the, in the past century. And it is where the president hosts uh, other presidents and very important meetings. A very, very beautiful meeting. I would say one of the most beautiful buildings in the whole continent. And we had the meeting, <laughs> not the school, <laughs> but, uh, but the meeting with UNTA. So guys, it's uh, have one minute more. I just want to thank you very much for your commitment, for your help with this with the school. The school would not be what it is without your help, without your friendship, and without your knowledge. And uh, best regards from my, my dear Adrian Carvajal and also from our dear Oscar Mesano, who is the president of the organization, the non-for-profit organization that give us the platform, administrative platform for for this school. Uh, thanks to all of you. Thank you, Alfredo and Monica and other friends that are in the audience. And uh, I see you virtually and I hope to meet you in person really very much in Brazil or Mexico or here in, in beautiful Argentina. My best regards to all of you. Gracias a todos. Obrigado. Thank you, everybody. Ciao.